Hello everyone. I just wanted to hop on real quick and share, um, do a quick video and share a book with you that I'm really excited to read. Um, so it's called The Invaders by Pat Shipman. So Pat Shipman is a well-respected anthropologist, archaeologist from the States, and her research focuses on human-animal relationships, so looking at domestication and how that directly influenced human evolution. And the reason why I'm very excited to read this book is because it, she proposes that one of the advantages that gave humans the upper edge over Neanderthals um, when they moved onto the continent was the domestication of wolves. So, of course, if anyone was going to make this argument, it would be her. That's right up her alley. Um, and the reason why I'm intrigued to read this um, you know, ever since Neanderthals were first discovered, there's loads of, loads of different theories and reasons been proposed as to why Neanderthals actually went extinct. So things like disease, um, climate change. Um, I mentioned this book in a previous video, um, Clive Finlayson. Um, he's a huge proponent of the climate change theory. Um, and so d I, all of those different factors have been proposed. Um, you know, there's other certain reasons uh, involved. So um, Neanderthals, uh, the evidence that we have, we can sort of infer that they had smaller effective breeding populations and more, more sparsely um, located across the Eurasian landscape. Whereas, um, you know, more sparsely and, and more densely um, populated less densely populated than humans. Um, so there's other um, evidence, uh, there's other theories that have been sort of linked to that. Um, so in any case, I was, you know, I was quite intrigued to read this because it is like a slightly different spin on these other different theories. Um, so I'm not necessarily skeptical about it and I am open to hear her argument. Um, the reasons why I'm somewhat reserved um, the, the earliest direct evidence, artifactual evidence that we have for dog domestication, um, comes from, uh, Germany and it's about 18,000 years old and it's the earliest, um, undisputed skeleton of a dog that we have. Um, there is earlier evidence from around 36,000 years ago, um, I can't remember if that's calibrated or uncalibrated radiocarbon datings, but it, whatever the case, it would mean that the dates are, there's like a couple of thousand years difference. But in any case, the, there were um, some proto like dog wolf hybrids um, that were discovered with that age. And it does sort of lend some, credit to her argument. Um, if you remember from one of my previous videos, um, I discussed that Neanderthals went extinct between 30 and 40,000 years ago. Some say earlier, some say later. Um, and humans come onto the Eurasian scene around 45,000 years ago. So we share a common ancestor in Africa around 800,000 years ago. The ancestor of Neanderthals moved out of Africa into Eurasia and, you know, evolved directly into Neanderthals, whereas the um, ancestor of modern humans evolved directly in Africa. Various different dispersal movements in and out, uh, but the the key movement of modern of modern humans that seems to um, be most critical is this movement around 45,000 years ago into Europe and we begin to see a, you know, pretty much a rapid decline of um, Neanderthals after this point. There's um, evidence for a, a mixture um, and interactions and interbreeding between our species, um, it, but, you know, pretty much the interaction that we had wouldn't have lasted for more than a few thousand to 10,000 years at most. Um, by um, the artifactual evidence that we have. So quite a rapid decline and um, all of the different theories for extinction that we have, there's, you know, there's pretty much always this recurring theme that it's, there's a direct correlation between human migration into Eurasia and 
extinction of Neanderthals. There was a very recent paper um, this year that came out actually, and I'll share this in a link because it is open access. And it's a model-based study and they pretty much look at all of the variables, so climate change, um, Neanderthal populations, I don't know if it discusses disease or not, um, but essentially they say that on a continental scale, all of these different factors would have had minimal impact. And it, you know, it, the one thing that looks like it has the most marked or um, the, the most marked uh, um, impact is when you throw humans into the mixture. Um, I'd, I guess I can't really say that I favor one theory more over the other. Um, although, you know, there is this just, it's it's very, this, the case for this correlation is very strong and it's very hard to ignore. Um, I do, however, like Clive Finlayson. Um, I, you know, as I mentioned before, he does propose climate change. Um, however, um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of his work. I'm a big fan of his grad student's work, even his son's work. Um, uh, he's essentially a huge proponent for um, Neanderthal complexity. Um, you know, there, there's nothing unique about humans that gives, that should give us a superiority complex over Neanderthals. Um, so I, I, I do like his arguments for sort of grounding us and, you know, putting us in our place, you know, just because whatever happened happened doesn't necessarily mean that we're more superior. Um, Neanderthals, as we know, are very complex. Um, they had ritual, they had belief systems, they had empathy. Um, you know, there's so much about them that reveals that they're actually more like humans than we previously believed in even the past 20 years ago. But anyways, I digress. So I am very excited to actually read this book by Pat Shipman. Um, and another reason why I actually picked this up, my husband and I recently watched the film called Alpha. Um, and there's no spoilers here. This is exactly what the movie's about. But essentially, um, it's about, you know, their earliest accidental domestication of wolves um, in the Upper Paleolithic. So the Upper Paleolithic comes after the Middle Paleolithic. Middle Paleolithic means Neanderthals. Upper Paleolithic means um, early humans in Europe, modern humans in Europe. Um, but essentially, I digress again. Um, so I, I want to do. I almost want to do a reaction video to that. Not necessarily because there's so many different. There's so many things that I want to pick out about it that are are wrong. Um, it's more so I want to point out what ethnographic and archaeological evidence we have for the various different scenes and themes that are in that film. So maybe at some point I might do that. Um, but in any case, that was just a very short video on um, what I'm actually excited to read. Um, I am very tired right now, so I apologize if, um, if you know, if that comes across in, in the video. I did stay up pretty late last night until around half 12 one. Um, it was for a very good cause though. Um, I had book club last night and the reason why it took, it, it was so late is because the other participants, um, lived back in the States. So it was about 6 PM Eastern time when we actually started, which meant that I was five hours ahead. Um, so, you know, price I had to pay, but as I say, it's for a good cause. And it's not like I can do anything else in England at the minute because we're under a national lockdown due to the pandemic. So I was really looking forward to that. However, it did mean that I was pretty tired all day and I did work about 10, 11 hours. Um, it's nearly 10 o'clock now and I only just ate. <laughs> so, but I, I just wanted to hop on and, and really do this video. I've been meaning to do it um, a couple of days before, but just didn't have a chance and I didn't want to wait any longer. So in any case, um, I hope wherever you are in the world, have a good evening, a good morning, or a good afternoon. Um, but wherever you are, stay safe and have a good day. Thank you.